it is really important that I come here and I'm professional. And I say, look, let's not get carried away with it. But we may as well just end the season now. You may as well just give us all the trophies. <laughs> you may as well. Man United, 4-0 winners there against Liverpool. That was the perfect start. I'm not really sure what could have gone differently in that game that would have made that any better, really. Manchester United put out a strong team in that first half. I'm going to run through the tactical nuances we saw. Yes, please. If that's step one on the ladder of what's going to happen this season, I want to start running up that ladder straight away. I didn't expect that. I did not expect that level of performance from Manchester United. And there were so many patterns that we saw from so many individuals. And as a collective, that's the beginnings of something beautiful. That's the beginnings of something different, something new, something braver. Both on and off the ball there today. Manchester United did look like the Manchester United that I've seen for a good long time. And I tell you what, <laughs> he's put a big smile on my face. And damn sure it's put a smile on your face. Before the game, I said this on Twitter. I said, look, these are the things I'm looking for today. A higher back line play out from the backs and passing triangles and intensity in the press. And I tell you what, that Manchester United team delivered in that first half. They really, really did. I think we, we certainly saw the higher defensive line for sure. If I'm looking at this from a tactical perspective, I think it's this one here. You really saw this. Let me go on this screen here. You can see the two centre-backs there. Look how high the full-backs are. And the wingers tucking in. That is what Eric Ten Hag will want his team to look like. Fullbacks adopting a higher position. The defenders, the two centre-backs, adopting a higher position. And that higher line, which I spoke about in so much detail before the game, I just didn't expect it to be that good. I didn't expect United to be that good. All over the pitch, everybody was involved. Ten Hag, man. Wow. Those two weeks of intense pre-season training sessions they clearly paid off in that game first half it was a completely young Liverpool 11 of course it was second half last 30 minutes it wasn't and I tell you one big thing which I really loved changed the whole team in that second half the quality may have dipped off apart from Ik Zidane Iqbal Ooh, he looks he looks very good and Charlie Savage both in midfield both playing better than McTominay today quality dropped off a little bit the actual overall performance and the patterns did not Fair play to everybody, man. Jaden Sancho getting that goal with the first goal. Lovely finish into the corner. Excellent, patient build-up play. It's predictable if it's done correctly. That's, I think, what excites me the most about this season. There's things that you can call going into the game, expecting that we might be able to see Manchester United play with a higher line. We saw that. Playing out from the back, I think today we really saw exactly why we need Frankie de Jong. We need that player to receive the ball from our defence. To start the attacks from deep. Fred won't be that guy. Matomane certainly won't be that guy. The missing piece. He is the missing piece in that midfield. And we know that. And Eric Ten Hag's known that all summer long. Today though. So many positives on an individual basis. That first goal there from Jaden Sancho. Wonderful finish into the corner. He only got like four or five goals last season. I think he's going to absolutely storm it this year. But these two. Oh, Fred. You filthy bastard. Chipping Allison from 25 yards with his right foot outrageous audacious finish from the brazilian and hey look fred and de Jong, that's a midfield too i can probably get behind i can enjoy the fruits of that and i think manchester united would as well but that front three martial rashford and sancho rashford out of the three let's be honest he was the worst of the three if we're gonna i'm not gonna judge too harsh on individual performances i'm not gonna get overly uh full of praise for the players who play well but rashford was outshone today, certainly by Sancho and certainly by Martial, a player who I've slated and slated and slated, but a player who today showed that he is not lazy, that he can work inside a very, he, look, he did surprise me, surprised you, great pressing, he won the ball back like two, three, four times and then finished with a plomb, great goal, 3-0 in that first half and cruising, but as you say, you know, you're playing against a second, a second 11 really for, from uh, Liverpool, you can't really get too carried away, but it, I'm more focusing on the patterns that I saw, the build-up. I still think we massively lacked a, qu a real quality to bring the ball out from defence. We need Frankie de Jong. We need that player to receive the ball from defence and bring it out. I think we still struggle with that, especially when Liverpool started pressing harder. But it was certainly an improvement. The real successes that I saw were playing with that higher line, doing it well. 
there was actually a, an occasion in that first half where we played, we had the possession for like 90 seconds, two minutes. We got the whole way up to the Liverpool ed edge of the box, couldn't get through, but instead of losing our patience, we played it the whole way back to De Gea. He then had a little dummy, played it out to the right back, which was Delo. We played it through and created a chance. It's that patience that Eric Ten Hag's trying to instill into this team. And we saw it there today. And I'll tell you one special... I say I'm not going to get uh, too excited about performances or too caught up in players not playing well. Zidane Ikba. He showed... He's a bit of a baller today, didn't he? Really out, out... Completely outplayed Scott McTominay. Scott McTominay showed the limitations of his game today. Showed why we need strengthening in midfield. But Zidane Iqbal and Charlie Savage, both in that second half. And again, up against that full 11 when it came on from Liverpool. They play well. And that fourth goal. Pellistri. Eric Bai. That was pure Eric Bai, by the way, wasn't it? Pure Eric Bai on the counter-attack. <laughs> and Pellistri got the finish. Ahmad got the goal. Sorry, Ahmad got the assist. Wonderful counter-attack from Manchester United. Just all over the pitch today. I didn't expect to see that good a performance. If I'm looking at the, f uh, the, uh, the things that I think, okay, if I was to Eric Ten Hag going into the training session tomorrow... Uh, when we did lose the ball out of possession, when uh, when we were uh, when we got pressed out and we lost it and we were out of shape, there was a huge gap in midfield. Huge gap. Freddie McTominay both going a bit too far forward. It's why I've always thought, and we all know that by now, that a midfield enforcer that's a natural ball winner that stays a little bit deeper to protect that against the press when you lose out. We kind of need that. We we definitely need. That. Um, yeah, if I'm I'm looking at uh, us playing out from the back with the ball, I think it could have been far better today. But I think that will come with time. I think the natural things that can happen immediately with coaching, we saw today, we've got real quality up front, man. We've got Martial, we've got Rashford, we've got Bruno. Bruno today, Bruno played better. Bruno played smarter. I liked what I saw from Bruno today. Donny van der Beek, by the way, second half. Boop. Pure flat line from the lad. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him this season, certainly with Christian Eriksen coming in. Donny, you've got to prove yourself here, buddy, or you will just... Be put on the bench. And even Eric Ten Hag will do that for you. But yeah. Happy days. Just, you just got to be happy that. We just beat Liverpool. I don't give a shit if it's the pre-season. And you can't get too excited. Just beat Liverpool 4-0. And after getting humped by them twice last year. I like that. And it's the start. As I say. The first step on that new ladder going forward. And, and this was. I, I thought was very interesting. And that's why, that's why I said, that's why I've been so focused on these pre-season videos I've been doing. Because we know that Eric Ten Hag's tactics, we know what he likes to do. Two deep, two, two centre-backs with his full-backs playing a little bit higher up. The wingers tucking in to create overloads. And that's what we saw. It's right there in front of your eyes. It's perfect. Well, it wasn't perfect. Hold on. Hold on. It's down. Like, park that bus. It's not perfect. But it's quickly visible. And that's the thing. And it was visible in that second half as well. Despite 10 changes happening, it was still visible. There was still a lot to like in that second half. I Look, happy days, man. I'm really, really over the moon for that as the first Eric Ten Hag performance. Tyrell Malassia making his debut. I think we saw his qualities and saw the weaknesses of his game. He lost the ball in some positions defensively, but had the ability and the athleticism to recover. That's what he's very good at. Or what he's got to make, like, prove into his game now is making sure he's cutting out those mistakes in the first place. That's what we'd like to see. But Tyra Malasia, I'm excited to see how he develops. But Eric Ten Hag will be going around and patting everybody on the back there. There's no doubt improvements that need to happen. And that's what preseason is about. Building game on game on game. But going into that game, did you expect Manchester United to beat Liverpool 4-0? Did you expect a second half where we had Iqbal and Savage in midfield and Tellez Tellez as a left centre-back and to keep a clean sheet and still score a goal with a counter-attack from Palistri? No, not at all. Happy days. I'm just delighted. I'm delighted that it's got started in the best possible way. Let's see what happens against Melbourne. Let's see what happens against Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, uh, Atletico Madrid, and then building up to the Brighton game. But the early signs are very, very good, and that's put a big smile on my face. I'm sure it's put a big smile on your face going to be a cracking live stream in the morning. Maybe I'll go live later on today. I don't know. We'll celebrate. But look, make sure you drop a like on the video. That was the perfect start for Eric Ten Hag. Can't start burying the bad memories, I hope. Start to looking forward. The future's bright and the future's orange and red.